the Tigers have been tamed. All mathematical chance is now gone and Leicester are out of the race for this year's Premiership. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. Loads more content coming here for a very long time, so hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any of that. Now then, as I mentioned, Leicester were all but mathematically uh, not in with a chance and they sort of backed that up by sending Oli Chesham off for an operation, which probably could have kept for another week, but he was out uh, of the game and playing Sale, who were desperate for another five-point win to continue their charge. They are on a roll at the moment. Five-point win after five-point win and are coming into the playoff picture. However, they didn't have the best start as George Ford kicked the first kickoff, a trick, trick kickoff. They went the other way and it went not 10. It's the type of thing that you get so amped up for a game and then the kickoff doesn't go 10 and everything just deflates. And it was a little bit of a patchy start from both teams. Defences were on top, kicking was strong, but Andre Pollard found a way through that with a lot of space in behind the line. He chipped, got the ball back, and after several phases, Dan Cole, 37 years and one day old, rumbled over. It was a bit of a mismatch as he came up against Gus War and also had George Martin driving over. Poor Gus War didn't stand a chance uh, for 5 0 after five minutes. And then what happened next? is what has happened to Leicester a lot this season. It's a real coach killer. They were defending absolutely fine around the halfway line. Sale weren't making any dents whatsoever. And then it was a really cheap offside penalty, which gave Sale an entry. Line out, Manu charged over Ollie Hassel Collins, who got yellow carded because it was head to head. Uh, and then Gus War beat George Martin twice, I think, when he was trying to get back in the line to score 7 5. And that opportunity could have been completely negated. It didn't need to be given away. Leicester have done that a lot this season, and it's really held them back. Sale scored again with a front peel. Uh, you don't see them too often, but they're an absolute joy. A real key bit to this is you've got to take away the front man of the opposition line out, and that was Dan Cole in this place. I couldn't see who it was. The replays weren't clear, but somebody did a brilliant job of taking Cole out of the way, leaving Ben Curry to pass a Tommy Taylor for the try. And 14-5, Sale were the better team, but uh, and 14-5 seemed fair at the po that time. Shortly after that, Sale playing some rugby, not really flowing, but playing some rugby. And here's a good example of it. They got the ball into a wide channel and hooker Tommy Taylor hit a really hard line. And in lots of ways, it was great. But he was the only option, so he had to be past the ball. Um, otherwise, there would have been a crossing offence. And that just led to a little bit of a stuttered phase in the next one. Matt Scott, the Leicester centre, anticipated that perfectly, came charging through on the intercept, uh, and it was 14-12. There was lots of talk that he was potentially offside, but technical faults. They lost all the replays at this point, so it was just a case of, right, well, we've got to trust the on-field decision. And you know what? It felt a bit refreshing not to have analysing replays and was he onside by a millimetre or was he just off? It was kind of nice. Um, anyway, 14-12. Uh, uh, and shortly after that, I mentioned that both teams were a bit stuttery in attack. Neither of them are the most, I don't know, the most beautiful teams to watch, I guess. But George Ford did a little bit of a pump and a second phase pass to Sam James, who just carried through the line and post-contact meters were massive probably should have held onto the ball but he offloaded to Manu to a laggy who got bundled into touch but that was the first bit of really real class attacking play from either team during this phase as well Andre Pollard fair play to him two huge tackles he absolutely banged Manu to a and then Sam James as well shortly afterwards two huge hits Another lovely little bit that I really liked was say, uh, Leicester moved the ball into a wide channel. It went to Dan Cole, who I'm pretty sure wasn't hoping to be the receiver. And just to make sure he caught it, he went down to both knees to make sure he caught the ball, which made me chuckle. Shortly after that, again, I mentioned these Leicester uh, coach killers and they've overthrown a line out from an attacking position. Sale get into great phase play. They go through a couple of phases. Bevan Rod gets through the line and offloads. And then this is something that if you've played rugby, you'd have done this drill thousands and thousands of times. Just got an upper channel, picking off defenders, left, right, left, right. Ended with Sam James playing his last game for sale uh, at this stadium, scoring for 21-12. 
uh, and the crowd, yeah, and everybody just went wild. So delighted for him. What an absolute servant to that club. Started as a fan, got to put on the jersey and very sad that he won't be able to end his days, his playing days there. Tigers nicked a penalty on half time to make it 21-15. And, you know, just to get back within a score, to stay in touch, you know, let the nerves jangle a little bit. It's all sales to lose, really. Uh, but... Sale came out and were really pretty dominant in the second half and, and Tigers fizzled away, I would say. George Ford was really going for his touch kicks from penalties. He missed one in the first half and he missed one in the second half as well. But that led to an absolutely beautiful attack from Sale. Ford flung the ball wide to Sam James in the midfield from the kick return. Sam James with a face with a three on three saw the space. There's always space on a rugby pitch. You've just got to identify it and get the ball there, right? Sometimes it's between the players, sometimes it's around, and sometimes it's over. In this case, it was over. Sam James kicked the ball, crossfield kick, absolutely perfectly. A beautiful attacking kick. A few more phases. Sale kept the ball, kept probing. Tigers did really well to defend the ball. But then Sam James got on it again and again, spacing behind. This time a grubber for a flaherty to score. Now, I talk a lot about kicking. Uh, on this channel boring kicking is boring these two kicks were absolutely perfect not planned just saw what was on saw where the space was put the ball there and it led to the bonus point try for sale 28 15 with the conversion hitting the top of the post and going over you don't see that very often um, and yeah game over at that point they kicked another penalty shortly afterwards to get them out beyond two scores 31 15 Leicester, <laughs> Leicester had a line out very deep in the territory, you know, maybe a half chance of getting back in the game, but they, they stuffed that one up a little bit as well. Just detail missing, which led to Manu Tuolangi charging up the middle of the pitch from his own five metre line. A long way to go, as they pointed out in commentary with his hamstring history. And really, I really think he should have passed. It was a three on two. I mean, it was a long way to go. There was a lot to happen, but I really thought he should have passed and then supported Eventually led to him kicking uh, and, and Tigers didn't manage to get the score. Sorry, Sale didn't manage to get the score. Uh, again, some, you know, we all praise beautiful attacking rugby, but there was a stunning bit of defence as well from Whiteley for Leicester. Uh, it was Aaron Reid who'd come on and was looking really zippy and lively, cut through. Whiteley cut him down and then got back up to steal the turnover as well. It was high class defensive play. Something else you don't see very often in this game was Freddie Stewart got really angry at Jean-Luc Dupree when he came in and cleared him out. Looked like there was some kind of head contact in there. Certainly Stewart took huge offence to it and was properly, you know, going for it with Jean-Luc Dupree over the touchline. Uh, shortly after that, Freddie Stewart makes a lovely break through the middle. Who should he meet? Come in the other way, but Jean-Luc Dupree, who picked him up and dumped him backwards some several metres. Stewart looked a little bit hesitant after that. He looked like he, you know, hurt himself a little bit. So, uh, you know, watch out, watch out. Don't challenge these big South Africans too often. That's what I would say. <laughs> Tigers did get a late try with George Martin driving over for 31-22. But really, as all the subs came on and the game broke up, this really deteriorated into a lot of mistakes. There was quite a lot of scrums in the game. It was an entertaining game, but you could tell really there was only one team in it and one team desperate to win. Uh, lovely moment at the end as Sam James got caught by surprise by his emotions and cried for the last couple of minutes on the pitch, got given man of the match as well, which was uh, a lovely gesture. gesture. I, I mean, I think he actually deserved it completely. Uh, those two attacking kicks and some of his other play from fullback, he was great under the high ball too. That was lovely. Alex Sanderson announced to the crowd live over the mic that he'll be staying for another three years as well. That contract extension signed and that is great for stability. I've mentioned this before. It does make a huge difference to all the players. You know, players will be there because Sanderson's the coach. You know, that will be a factor in whether they want to stay or want to leave. Um, so to have that signed off before the end of the season, I think is huge. And it could, again, just be a motivating factor for these guys to go on and push to the end of the season. It's going to be a tough ask because they've got tough games and they need to go and win them all, basically, to have a chance. But they can do it. They can do it. They're looking quite pragmatic. Sanderson's mentioned pragmatism 
when he was doing his interview a number of times and you know I think he knows that's really more often how championships are won so we will see sale go on Tigers are out let me know what do you think any big moments I missed in this game I'd love to hear in the comments down below any players that impressed you that I didn't pick out again let me know in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a friendly conversation give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind it helps other people find it and you can subscribe there you can watch that one next and do not forget to get out and play